All right. Evening, everyone, and welcome back to another Peaceful Solution Character Education Teachers Certification course here. We are uh, glad to have everyone with us who might be joining us uh, online or, or here locally as we uh, social distance in the facility here. Um, we're going to continue here with the chapter two of the character unit. And uh, for those of who, who were watching last class, <clears throat> I know that uh, the uh, previous uh, teacher set it up so that you will have a wonderful song. Uh, I, I'm sorry to disappoint you, I will not be singing uh, to start this class off. Um, in fact, I think if I did sing, it probably would disappoint you. But uh, hopefully you did go over uh, page 49 there, with the song entitled, My Family and Me. And of course, if you remember, that song there is kind of a, you know, it's kind of an extracurricular activity there to kind of, to cap off uh, what we were talking about in regards to all in the family, okay? Uh, because uh, again, this is chapter two of the character unit and we're re re rehearsing uh, the different types of characters that we see and how they affect the family. Now in chapter one, of course, we, we talked about the, the basis of what character is. Right? And, the, and the difference between positive and negative character and where it comes from and <coughs> excuse me, how it affects us and how it affects our decision making and affects others as well. Well, as we see here, because the theme continues on throughout all the, the units of the Peaceful Solution, you learn about what that concept is that you're going to be learning and then you learn about uh, how it affects you and then starts to you know build from there. And of course, these are continually building blocks. Well. In regards to this, in chapter two, we see that we talked about the family. Well, why is the family so important? Because the family plays an important part in the development of a person's character from their, their infancy up through their, their adulthood. So it's very important to kind of lay that foundation. And as teachers, you know, as uh, the previous teachers mentioned in the other classes, classes, it's important for us to have all these things in mind, right? When we're teaching our students this, you know, they're, they're not going to know any of this information initially, you know, not until we actually teach it to them. And we might have to go over it with them again and again and again, because you know, we don't retain everything the first time we learn it. Okay. And this is why a person will go to school and within that school year, yeah, they do learn new things, but for the most part, they're rehearsing the same thing over and over and over throughout that school year to kind of drive it deeper into the mind of the student. Well, it's the same thing with these, these concepts, these principles that we're teaching in the Peaceful Solution as a teacher. Uh, remember what it was said uh, in previous classes, you know, how do you measure the effectiveness of this character education program? Well, it's through behavioral changes. So as we interact with the students throughout the day, throughout the week, um, or if you're using this at home, I know we do have a lot of people that, that homeschool their children. Um, then you have to look at the behavior of the students to see if they're modeling those, those concepts that are being taught. And if not, you know, uh, go back and rehearse them again. Okay, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with going back and revisiting those, uh, the principles that we've, we've taught here, we went over. Uh, you, can't, you can't go over it too much is basically what I'm saying. All right, so um, <clears throat> if, you've, if you read over that uh, page 49 there, that's that song, My Family and Me. Let's, let's look back there to um, LP2E. All right, LP2E, and we're going to look at, um, well, we'll go over these, because uh, well, we'll, we will need to read these, these procedures here. We'll look at procedure 8 and Procedure 9. All right, Procedure 8 says, the exercise found on pages 50 through 51 of the student's handbook is designed to allow students to gain a better understanding of their individual families. Okay, and this is, this is important for them to understand because uh, like personality, people tend to, they tend to look at uh, other families as the one that they want to be in. Right, uh, as the old saying, the grass is always greener on the other side. Okay, but um, but they they don't tend to look at their own family, and and in a lot of cases see a lot of the benefits 
that are there at home. <clears throat> Sometimes students might grow up in a, you know, kind of a, an impoverished uh, home, but their needs are taken care of. They have food, they have clothing, they have shelter. But because they don't see the importance of that, they might not like their home life. OK. And so as we went over this and we talked about what a healthy family is, uh, you know, this will give them the opportunity to look back and reflect on their home life because they might be a little bit poor, but they have food, clothing and shelter and they're not physically, uh, verbally or sexually abused. You know, I would say that that's a that's a great family to be in. But sometimes you have to to open their minds and to to be able to see these these important points, because it's easy to look at the the personality of something it's easy to look at the the outside of something and think that that's what you want to think that uh, that's the 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 more joyous way of life okay um, but this gives them the opportunity um, to better understand uh, their individual families now it'll also explore other family members of the value of, I'm sorry it'll also expose other family members to the value of positive moral character within the family, as well as areas that the students can improve on. Um, assign the exercise family matters, family assessment as a take home assignment. So essentially this would be homework for the students. Uh, instruct students to interview their family members based on the instructions on the sheet. Do a follow up and allow students to discuss what they what they learn about themselves and their families okay and then of course that that's on um, page 50 and page 51 and there's a series of of six questions and that's family members name and you know gives you some lines that you can ask three family members and then their answers below the, those questions in the corresponding columns all right and then um uh, lesson plan or, or uh, procedure nine excuse me we're still on LP2E. It says, encourage students to read the section on page 52. And that's what we're going to be uh, covering this evening, entitled, What I Have Learned. Of course, this is a recap of a summary of, of everything that we went over in the, the previous chapter. Uh, and so this is what we're going to do today. Uh, conclude the lesson by reiterating that the goal of every parent should be to provide food, I'm sorry, safety, food, shelter, clothing, guidance, love, and appropriate affection to their children. Now keep in mind what we, what we covered in the previous uh, classes regarding love and, and, and the concepts of love in regards to upholding the rules, okay? Never to be confused with inappropriate touch. Uh, although family, although every family will have its negatives and positives, a family should be a loving and supportive unit. Okay, a loving and supportive unit. In this way, each fam, each member of the family will have the opportunity to develop a positive character, and that's very important to give someone the opportunity to make a right choice. In society where a person is continuously bombarded with negative influences uh, at, in their own homes, they, they don't really see many positive influences. Uh, they're not taught any positive concepts or the negative concepts far outweigh the positive concepts that they're taught or the, the teachings that they're taught in the home. They really don't have the opportunity to develop a positive character. In order to have an opportunity to do so, you have to have both sides of the coin, so to speak. You have to have uh, the, the positive things taught to you and you have to be able to, to, to see and distinguish between positive and negative so that you have the opportunity to make the choice as to which direction you want to go. Of course, as we covered in the beginning of chapter one, uh, the hope is that we'll take the road less traveled, okay? Because that leads to a, a successful life. Um, but, um, it says there, um, I'll just reread that last part. It says, although every family will have its negatives and positives, a family should be a loving and supportive unit. In this way, each member of the family will have the opportunity to develop a positive character. Uh, the definition of that word unit there, uh, it is a noun, and it simply means an individual thing or person regarded as a single or as single and complete but which can also form an individual component 
of a larger or more complex whole. Okay, so that that larger or more complex whole that we're referring to in this chapter is the family unit. Okay, uh, and each member of that family unit, you know, plays a part in, as we learned from chapter one, and of course in this chapter as well, the development of the character in every other member in that family unit, including theirs as well. Okay, because remember, it's it's our it's our our family map family members and our parents and siblings and so forth that help in the, the development of the things we value and the and the development of our character as well. Well, we also uh, do the same thing towards other people who who are in our family. So let's look over to page 52 here, page 52. All right. And this is the title or, or the uh, section, What I Have Learned. And uh, we're going to be covering eight points this evening. Let's see here. And uh, let's look at the, the first checkbox there, uh, point one. It says, uh, my parents and other family members play an important part in the development of my character and personality, okay? Um, like we learned in the chapter one, and of course in this one here too, you know, uh, those factors that help to develop a person's character includes environment, the influences, and the family values, right? Family values. Well, uh, your environment, for the most part, uh, for your first four or five years, you know, you spend mostly at home. Okay, uh, unless you're in a situation where, you know, if you don't, you know, babysitters and things like that. But for the most part, at the end of the day, you do go back home. Um, but let's look at page uh, 35. We'll look at page 35 and 36. And this, of course, these are where these these components are are realized here. Um, page 35 and 36. There we see oops, 36. At the very beginning there of the of the chapter in the introduction, it says your parents and your environment, as well as other siblings and family members, play a major role in what you value and the development of your character. Now remember, you know, of course, values are, are things that are important to you, okay? Um, and your environment is pretty much everything around you. You, you know, your peop the people that you spend the time with, uh, the neighborhood you grow up in, the school, all those things play a part in your environment. Well, you know, all of these play a major role in what you value and the development of your character. But, but keep in mind, as we, we've said previously, um, that's not a necessarily fixed situation that you're in. Okay, now they, your character uh, begins to be shaped from the moment that you're conceived up through the time when you, you know, start making uh, decisions on your own. But <clears throat> even if you've developed certain characteristics into uh, a person's adolescence life, adolescent or teenage life, because um, this, you know, what this is directed to, but it applies to everyone, um, even if you're, you know, 50 or 60 or 100 years old, you can still change, okay? Even though the influences that came from home, the family values and so forth, uh, played a, a major role in the development of your character, it's important to allow the students to, to reiterate to them that they're not stuck in that situation. You know, their past does not have to define their future, okay? Uh, it might, it might ha it, of course, it has shaped them up to who they are right now because it's only shaped based on the tools and the information that was given to them up until the point that they start to learn the peaceful solution. So they are a combination of the things that they grew up around, the values and the teachings and influences up to that point. But from this point forward, now with uh, being equipped with the, the tools, the knowledge, uh, the education uh, to make better choices and become a, a person of integrity in the development of a positive character, they can turn that whole thing around uh, from that day forward. And it's important to express that to them because a lot of people feel hopeless in their life, right? They, 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 they grow up in an environment where hope is not expressed, right? Ah, uh, you're going to end up being just like, you know, your, your, your father or your uncle, you know, or he was in, he was in jail at X amount, you know, a time, or he was, you know, killed on the streets at this age, or, or you're just going to end up on welfare or this or that, or, you know, and they, they just continuously reiterate these, these negative, um, 
sayings to the person and it, and it kind of demoralizes them. Um, but of course, the peaceful solution gives them hope. It helps them to see that, no, you know, you're not stuck in that situation. We acknowledge and recognize that, okay, there are some areas in my character that are not positive. Now, what can I do to change it? And that's what we want to do. We want to focus on the positive, accentuate the positive, and work on eliminating the negative. Okay, well, you got to know what the negative is in order to eliminate it, and that comes through this process of education. Um, let's see, it says... Um, uh, the role, look at the second paragraph there. It says the role of parents and the family in shaping a positive or negative character cannot be overstated. Okay, and uh, of course in this chapter you will learn that character plays a key role in families. A negative and, uh, or positive character has the ability to destroy a family or strengthen and build the family unit. Okay, and then if we look over to page 36 there, continuing in with this... Um, this first point, page 36, I'll just reread it again. It says, my parents and other family members play an important part in the development of my character and personality. Page 36, it says, um, uh, let's see here, and the second, oh, no, 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 one, two, three, third paragraph there, uh, towards the kind of the bottom of the paragraph there, it says, um, the combination of character, personality, environment and experiences makes each person one of a kind however the most significant factors that shape you <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> that shape you <clears throat> into who you are are your parents and other family members it is from these two sources that you learn what to value how to behave and how to respond to different situations all of these uh, things help to shape your character and of course um, like we like we mentioned previously you know people who grow up in homes or in environments where violence and lashing out and the uncontrolled display of anger are continuously displayed they themselves will eventually do the same things when they're at school and interacting with others when they're in the neighborhood or on the playground or wherever they are you know, they're going to respond in those situations if someone does something that, that irritates them and uh, they've seen how family members previously handled irritating situations, uh, possibly even with them. Uh, you know, sometimes parents will, will, will lash out when they're burdened with a lot of things and if, if there's a lot of children in the home or, or whatever the case might be and they're asking for things, you know, mom, dad, can I do this? Or You know, you, get off of me, you're, my, you're getting on my last nerve. You know, and, uh, and I've heard that a few times growing up. I don't know how many last nerves my mom had, but uh, apparently I think I jumped on several of them. Uh, but but I mean, you know, uh, in those situations, um, a child could respond in that same way towards others. OK, and because these are like we're, like we've learned previously, and we're going to learn as we get into the next chapter, these are influences. Right. And uh, and the child sees those things and the and children they pick up more on what they see and experience than what you verbally tell them, okay? Uh, when it comes to instruction anyway, <laughs> you know, we talked about some of the negative things that, that can be said through verbal abuse, and yes, that does affect a person, so I'm not saying that's, that's irrelevant, but when it comes to directing a child in, in a positive way, if a parent sits there and tells a child not to do something, that that's negative or bad for their health but the parent is doing that the child is going to see that more than what the parent said you know don't smoke it's bad for your health you know well grandma is like 90 something years old and she still smokes you know okay um you know don't don't run in the house you're going to hurt yourself or whatever the case might be so it's important that we we model these these things as parents and teachers um, and, and point out to the children as well, the students as well, that even though you might see certain things taking place in your family, go back to the, the concepts of the peaceful solution. If what is being said or what is being done brings harm to that person or to someone else, then you shouldn't do it. Okay, this goes back to moral principles or moral, uh, moral values, which relates to rules. All right, and let's see here. Did I cover that? Oh, yeah, I sure did. Okay, I had that note there twice. All right, so that's point number one. My parents and other family members play an important part in the development of my character and personality. Personality. Okay, number two there. 
It says, all of my interactions um, and experiences affect the way I grow and what I value. And, and notice that first word there, all of my interactions and experiences. And as we're going to see, as we prepare to move into the next chapter, which is, uh, you know, really getting into influences because those influences are continuously around us, even at home, even when the child is, is young and growing up in their formative years, those are still influences that, and, and their interactions with their family members, um, they affect the way that individual grows and of course what they value. And we talked about some of the positive values that uh, that can be de developed in early childhood, but also some of the negative values that can be developed as well. Um, let's see here. That word there, um, huh. let me see. Oh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. No, I, I, I looked at the definition. I thought I had it written down wrong. The word there, and of course we've covered this before. Um, I just want to remind you, uh, interactions, um, it's a reciprocal action or influence. You know, a reciprocal action and influence. And the definition here says, uh, how we interact, we interact on a person. Um, but it's the reciprocal action or influence, um, or influence <coughs> on someone or something. Uh, you think about reciprocal, most of us, you know, guys here, we know about uh, what a reciprocal saw is, right? Or AKA sawzall, right? The saw that goes back and forth like this when you squeeze the trigger and it goes faster. Well, yeah, they call it a reciprocating saw, okay? Because it goes forward and it cuts, it goes backward and it cuts, right? And so it's kind of uh, when we interact with people, we reciprocate those interactions, okay? And so if someone interacts with us in a negative way and we're not trained and we respond in a negative way too, we're reciprocating that negative behavior. But it does not always have to be a negative reciprocation. We could, you know, respond to them in a positive way, okay? Um, but it says um, uh, the definition of reciprocal is um, something given, felt, or done in return. Given, felt, or done in return. And all of this makes up our interactions and our experiences, of course, as well. Of course, these affect the way we grow and what we value. Well, let's um, keep in mind that, you know, the way I grow um, up to the point when you start to receive a different um, set of, of tools, a different set of information, you can start to change the direction that you're growing. Okay, I like to look at, I like to compare the, the, uh, the peaceful solution to, to like a ray of light, so to speak. Okay, if you've ever been outside and you've seen um, uh, like a flower or grass. Uh, if you've ever noticed a flower, even sunflowers in the morning, uh, they will tend to face the sun. And grass will do the same thing too. Any golfers will know that, you know, if you're playing grass at a certain time of day, that grass blade, it'll move throughout the day because it, it tracks the sun. It follows the sun. Plants track the sun, okay? Um, well, when a person grows up in a dysfunctional home, it's kind of like a dark side of their life okay and so as a result they're not able to really grow and to become uh, the the most that they can be well when the peaceful solution is given to them it's like it's like light it's like a ray of light to them to a plant right and plants they thrive on it you know photosynthesis they turn that into beneficial things for us you know and oxygen and moisture and water and things like that so you know as they receive it as plants receive it you ever looked underneath the a pallet or a board that you had in your yard and you pick it up and the grass is all like pale and yellow and everything and after a few days that grass starts to turn nice and green and lush well that's what the peaceful solution is you know it's that light that that can help a person grow in a positive way but of course they have to be taught it and so the point of being that sin is that once the light is there that information is there they can change the direction in which they're growing so let's look at page 36 again there um, all of my interactions and experiences affect the way I grow and what I value. We'll look at page 36 and 38. Um, which one am I on? Okay, yeah. okay. 
yeah so that that was basically what we just read there um the combination of character, personality, environment, and experience makes each person one of a kind. However, the most significant factors that shape you into the way you grow are your parents and other family members. Now, if you back up there to um, the top, uh, not top, but the uh, first sentence in the second paragraph, it says, Family members also share personality traits, but unlike character traits, which are sometimes inherited Genetically, shared personality traits are often learned behaviors. A learned behavior is something you see and then practice. And that's the thing about experiences. Um, <coughs> experiences, it's merely an event, <coughs> an event or an occurrence that leaves an impression on someone. Okay, an experience is an event or an occurrence that leaves an impression on a person, you know, on an individual. Okay, and of course, these affect, like if a person... Um, was neglected uh, as a as a child uh, they might not like being by themselves right so they might have what people call separation anxiety okay uh, or they might like being by themselves more because that experience uh, impacted them and they don't like being around people okay so these are some of the things that that help shape the way a person grows and what they value um, Let's look at uh, page, uh, well, if we look at page 38, we see how that uh, pertains to the, to the parent, but also the students, they're, you know, they're eventually going to become parents and adults themselves. It says um, in the first paragraph under when there are problems at home towards the middle, it says an adult's experiences, values, and character define what kind of parent he or she will be. Even the students that we're teaching uh, at this time, you know, they will eventually become uh, parents. They'll definitely become adults, but they'll become parents uh, possibly one day. Although most parents treat their children with love and respect and provide them with food, safety, and shelter, there are some parents because of their upbringing and choices who are verbally, emotionally, uh, physically, and even sexually abusive to their children. All right, and so let's look um, look at page 40 there. Okay, um, let's see here. In the uh, first paragraph, yeah, first paragraph, second sentence, it says, When someone grows up in the home uh, where there is physical and sexual abuse, in their, uh, physical and sexual abuse their self-concept and character development will be affected. Okay, and of course, self-concept is the way you see yourself. And, and these are factors, these are influences, these are experiences that a person goes through or might go through in their family life that affects the development of their character all right and so <clears throat> it's important for the student to know that because and again they're going to evaluate their own self they're going to when they take this um this uh assignment home the family matter assignment they're going to evaluate their family life and so this gives them an opportunity to take a uh, a long hard look so to speak at their environment and their home life uh, now that they understand a little bit about what values are uh, about what environment is uh, and so forth and, and, and give them the, the, the tools and resources to to evaluate how their family life is okay and so um, but all those things their interactions experience affect the way that they grow and what they what I value and again like I said it's not permanent uh, anybody can change uh, with the right environment experiences and influences. They just have to, you have to take those negative influences and environments and experiences and turn them into positive ones, right? And then you'll start to, that person will start to change their values. Their mind will change. All right. Let's see here. Let's look at point number three. It says families that suffer from uh, emotional, physical, and sexual abuse as well as alcohol and substance abuse also experience the most damaging effects on the development of positive character. But even that can be changed with effort. Ex excuse me, effort, example, and teaching the peaceful of the peaceful solution character education program on my part. Okay, so it's referring to the, the student who's looking at this and, and receiving this information because they might feel trapped. They might feel like, you know, this is this is just what I've grown up in. 
there's nothing I can do about it. No, there is something that, that each individual can do about it. We have no control over what mom and dad and brother and sister, or uncle, or whoever is extended family might be staying with us or might not be staying with us, but might come and visit from time to time. But we do have control over ourselves, the way we think, the way we feel, the way we act, and the way we respond to the things that are done to us or said to us. And this, this gives them those resources that they need. So let's see here. Um, page, uh, yeah, page 38. Let's look at page 38. <clears throat> and we just read that top part there. Um, uh, when someone grows up in a home where there's physical and sexual abuse, their self-concept and character development will be affected. Well, let's look down to um, the last, uh, second to last sentence in that first paragraph. It says, these emotions, uh, the, the negative concept, uh, tend to you know, be sad and depressed and angry and resentful. Well, it says, these emotions can lead to negative character traits such as being hateful, aggressive, and revengeful. These negative character traits will often result in violent behaviors. Okay, um, look down to the um, first sentence underneath the case study there about Cheryl, who, of course, we read there how she was being, um, you know, sexually abused. Her mother was being abused, and um, uh, but she was abused as well. Um, it says here, it says uh, it is clear to see that abuse has a negative effect on character. Okay, uh, Cheryl became revengeful and arranged for her father to be killed. Not, not her mother, I was thinking about a different uh, accounting there. But she arranged for her father to be killed. Okay, so we see how these negative uh, things affected her character and the choices she made. Let's look at the very bottom there, um, at the very last uh, sentence there. It says, here are some other problems that affect the home and the development of a positive character because we're talking about these things having an effect on the development of a positive character and these are some of the the, uh, the, the negative things that take place in a home such as alcoholism domestic violence substance abuse and divorce and there are many more things that can take place but these are just four things that that are very uh, common in society right now um, alcoholism and substance abuse is uh, to be dependent upon alcohol drugs uh, or drugs, and these uh, uh, substances are highly addictive. Uh, domestic violence is the use of physical force to injure or abuse another within the family. Okay, and that's why it's domestic. Um, and then down here underneath uh, the read the following statistics of the effects divorce has on children. We've seen there um, from the previous teacher, 63% of children from divorce homes suffer, suffer from anxiety, sadness, moodiness, phobias, uh, that is fear of different things, uh, and depression. 56% of the children's grades dropped in school or have grades below their ability. And also 43% uh, display aggression towards parents, okay, uh, because they don't know how to, to deal with those emotions that they're going through as well. Um, and then let's look at uh, page... 42, yeah, page 42 there, we see some of the cold hard facts um, that we covered there as well. These things that negatively, uh, they have effects on the development of a positive character. We talked about some of the uh, emotions there, the fear and anxiety and depression, uh, anger and hostility, uh, inappropriate sexual behavior, poor concept of themselves and difficulty in forming uh, relationships. Uh, mental problems can be a result of it. Um, um, long-term long -term mental problems as well. Uh, children at the very last part there it says children whose parents abuse drugs or alcohol have a greater opportunity of being emotionally, physically, and sexually abused as well. Okay, so we see a lot of these things that we covered here and then there's some examples of, of Ricky and <coughs> Ricky and Shantae and what they went through and how it affected them and, and their character and their uh, their interactions with others and the development of their character um, but these are things that take place on a regular basis you know every day um, let me see here was I going to cover that okay now we already did alright so that's uh, point number three there um, let's see here. 
Let's look at number four. Checkbox number four there. It says, in homes such as these, now this is uh, spinning off of uh, the third point there, right, where families suffer from emotional, sexual, or physical and sexual abuse, uh, as well as alcohol and substance abuse. Well, in homes such as these, uh, which this falls under the category of dysfunctional, as we, we talked about previously, there is a great deal of fear, okay, a great deal of fear, violence, hostility, and resentment. Uh, but notice what, what is being said to the student here, but I see that I can help myself and others as well. This I am capable of doing. Well, if you look over to page uh, 47, Look over to page 47, and let's look at the one, two, three, third paragraph down, and it says, uh, you can begin improving your family life by using moral character traits when interacting with your parents, siblings, and other family members. Uh, you can start by being respectful in your daily conversations and by being responsible and doing your share of chores. Uh, you must also remember to be humble, especially if you have done something wrong and your parents are trying to correct you, or giving you advice on ways you could have better handled the situation. Uh, the character traits of respect and humility, when used on a consistent basis, will reduce many conflicts and arguments between family members and especially between you and your parents. So the next time your brother or sister does something that annoys you, use patience and positive communication to express your feelings in an appropriate way. This means no name calling or purposely trying to hurt his or her feelings. Then be willing to forgive. Keep reminding him or her on page 48 that you would prefer hearing a request for permission before touching your things. Always be the one to set the right example to avoid conflicts. Okay, Always be the ones to set the right example to avoid conflicts. And this can be very difficult for a young person. It's sometimes very difficult for adults to set the right example when they're, uh, you know, someone's saying something or doing something to them that's very disrespectful, okay, or that they might perceive as very disrespectful. Uh, well, to humble themselves and, you know, respond in, a, in an appropriate way or respectful way, that could be a challenge, right? Uh, but it does become easier over time. But in setting the right example, look at the next uh, sentence there. Uh, model these things, model these things to help others learn from you too. Remember, model these things so others can learn from you too by your example. And that's what we're covering here. Um, I can help myself and others as well. And of course, when we uh, are trained, when they're taught these things, then they'll put them into practice. And in a lot of cases, and we've heard it uh, many times, you know, that, that parents see the change in their students' behavior and their attitude after starting to learn the peaceful solution. And it's just little things at first. It's not like they're all of a sudden, you know, you know some type of uh, saint or anything like that. But it's the little things that the parent knows, okay? Because sometimes parents struggle uh, to, to train their children and to bring them up because... You know, life doesn't come, uh, per se, with a an instruction booklet on how to how to raise a child, and, and everybody has different personalities, different you know characters, and you know there might be some other issues that are involved uh, with raising the child that are uncontrollable, certain mental issues and things like that. And parents do, in most cases, they do try to do their very best. Well, uh, it can be very difficult for them, but when they when their child is taught you know the, these character uh, this character education program and they start to grasp hold of it it's kind of put on their level where they can understand it then they start making small changes like it might be just something as simple as saying you know yes mom or yes dad okay or uh, not arguing back right uh, sometimes children like to get the last word in everything right go clean your room I don't want to clean my room well you need to clean your room why doesn't somebody else clean it why don't you clean it if you want to clean it? you know you know children like to argue back they always want to get the last word and things like that well when they start to realize well that's not the proper way to respond to you know your parents and they stop doing that the parents take notice of that okay and so this this it makes an impression in the parents mind okay and so they start to inquire 
well, what is it that they're learning from this peaceful solution? If it's helping my child, then it probably can help me too, okay? And they start to, to learn the information themselves. And, and in that way, you can see the whole family start to develop this positive character. And we're going to cover a little bit of why, why it's important for the whole family uh, to learn these things to make the family complete. So it says here, uh, this I am capable of doing, okay? Because each person is capable of putting these things into um, effect <clears throat> to start to change their character. All right, let's look at uh, one, two, three, four, number five there, or point five there. It says these negative emo or these emotions, and I, I just put in there for my notes, negative emotions, uh, lead to negative character traits such as uh, hatred, uh, aggression, and revenge. But I can find ways to assist in all problems as I grow and develop my moral uh, moral character traits. And of course, we just covered uh, those things that we talked about on page 47 and 48. Um, you know, each person doing their part uh, to practice moral principles. That's how we can, that's how a student, that's how a person uh, can assist in all problems um, as they grow and develop their moral character traits. Uh, like I said before, I kind of jumped ahead of myself, you know, not not arguing back, uh, doing your part, following following the instructions that the parents give you, doing your chores as they're assigned to you and so forth, keeping your room clean. And this is how the person or the child can assist uh, in all problems. And of course, that was, like I said, page, uh, page 47 there, uh, 47 and 48. <clears throat> Let's see there. So let's look at uh, six, number six there. It says, um, in healthy moral families, violence and abuse are discouraged because positive values and positive character traits based on respect and compassion are at the core of all interactions between family members. Notice here at the bottom there, again, as a kind of a, a positive note to the, to the student, I will also do my part to assure complete peace within my family. Okay, and so um, there at the top there it says in a healthy family or in healthy fa in healthy moral families, uh, and just 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 you know you keep this in mind you know for your notes, but also uh, reiterating to your students in regards to to morals. You know we keep going back to that, and we're always going to keep going back to that to keep it fresh and on the forefront of our minds. You know. Moral families are families that apply the rules, apply the rules that don't bring harm to anyone, uh, but instead, you know, bring about those those positive attributes, the the health and the safety, you know, the, the love and the, the appropriate affection uh, in the family and violence is discouraged and so forth. And let's just uh, let's just jump back to page. This is uh, from chapter one, but this just ties uh, into morals there um, at the very top second it's technically third sentence it says a moral value is like a line that divides wrong behavior from right behavior people from all walks of life young or old big or small rich or poor share some of the same basic concepts of moral values and then we see the three categories there and then we look at um, the first paragraph underneath those three categories moral principles right in regards to human life means acknowledging and accepting that life is valuable and all people have the potential to contribute to society. And of course, this is important because we're talking about the effects of character within the family. And when we deal with the family unit, we're dealing with people, right? We're dealing with, we're dealing with other people within our family. Uh, let's see, did I skip the part? Oh, when you have a moral attitude towards others, you accept and appreciate that they have the right to live in peace, safety, and security. And this is a part of what you find in a healthy family, peace, safety, and security. Well, let's look also back to page 44, or look forward to page 44 there, <clears throat> from page eight. And this is where we covered what is a healthy family. Okay, what is a healthy family? And it says there in the, um, First paragraph, uh, kind of towards the middle where the mother is, is, is uh, hugging the daughter there, it says the difference between a healthy family and that between a healthy family 
that has been trained or have trained themselves in moral character and a dysfunctional one is that a healthy family in a healthy family all members are given the love respect and support that is needed to develop moral character traits in families educated in positive moral character appropriate affection is shown to all members right so there there shouldn't be a black sheep of the family right uh, you know this one's the youngest or this one's the middle or that one's the the oldest or whatever I mean all members of the family should be shown um, this uh, this appropriate affection and so forth let's see here um, lost my place and member in families educated in positive moral character appropriate affection okay yeah is shown to all to all members in other words it it is appropriate for members of a family to display true love remember that ties into upholding the rules and concern congratulations appreciation and sometimes a loving hug and this is not to be confused with the inappropriate touch of sexual molestation let's look down to the next paragraph there it says in these families children communicate their needs to parents in positive ways right they communicate their needs to parents in positive ways not like in one of the um, uh, the elementary series uh, <laughs> for the children that taught there's a, a scenario there with Kathy's doll doll and she was screaming at her mother you know I want that doll now you know well she wasn't communicating her at least her desire that was necessarily a need uh, in a positive way okay and so you also see this in teenagers as well <laughs> uh, sometimes adults as well but where this is taught and respect is mutually shown between parents and children and siblings and so forth then the children will communicate these things in a positive way uh, children also respond sometimes children will communicate their needs in a negative way and sometimes this is done through stealing okay uh, they might need something but they go about it in an inappropriate way of doing it so where these character traits are taught they're taught there's nothing wrong with this thing that you need or even something that they want but this is the proper way to go about it. Keep the rules in obtaining the things that you want and you'll never have to suffer a, a consequence with it. Children also respond to their parents with respect. And uh, if anybody's ever watched the, uh, uh, um, I say Maury Polvik, I don't think he's on anymore, <laughs> uh, a Dr. Phil show or something, sometimes you see those scenarios, those episodes where, you know, the, the, the mother and the, the son, you know, have been brought onto the show because the the son is just completely you know unruly to his mar his mother or his father you know and slapping her and yelling at her and so forth and things like that well you won't see that in a healthy family and of course if they were trained in these things and given some time that would eventually turn around as well it says members of the family verbally express their care and concern for each other uh, by saying I love you or I appreciate you and then at the bottom there that first paragraph uh, in these families physical and mental health are also valued therefore the abuse of alcohol or drugs is discouraged all right okay so um, <clears throat> that was page 44 there um, I wanted to make another note here oh yes yes let me reread that point there it says in healthy moral families violence and abuse are discouraged because positive values and positive character traits based on respect and compassion are at the core of all interactions between family members I will also do my part to assure complete peace within my family um, that word there uh, core compassion respect and compassion are at the core of all interactions between family members that um, that word the definition of that word core there I bet you most of you when you think of the word core you thought of apple core you know I could be wrong but that's the first thought of core that came into my mind right and most of us don't want to eat the apple core but um, but from that core other apples can can be brought forth and it says the central or most important part of something that's the definition of the word core the central or most important important part of something the part of something that is central to its existence or character the part of something that is central to its existence or character and of course as we learn these concepts right they're they're changing they're shaping they're molding our heart and mind 
And these concepts are at the core of our character. They're at the core of our existence. Our existence is, you know, is who we are, right? It's how we act and how we exist, how, how we interact in our everyday lives with other people, or even when we're by ourselves, okay? And so it's important that, you know, to understand that these things are at the core of all, the intera of all interactions between family members. So if the interactions between family members are not healthy, it's because there's, there's kind of a rotten core there, right? And it has to be replaced with these positive, um, positive principles, these, um, these concepts that we're learning here. But it says here at that last part, it says, I will also do my part to assure complete peace within my family. And two points I wanted to make there in regarding that complete peace with my family. And this is something that, you know, you can, you know, um, kind of iterate to your, to your students because especially in today's society, we're used to everything being so instant and quick, right? Um, and that once we start to put something in practice, we should start to see full benefits immediately. Well, even though there are some things you'll start to see, uh, uh, changes immediately when we start to practice the peaceful solution the majority of the things that we see takes place over a period of time and so it does take time for everyone to start to make this change and to turn their hearts and change their hearts and their minds and start to go down a, a positive path instead of a negative path but also everyone must mutually uphold and practice the moral principles for there to be complete peace okay the family Every member of the family must, because if you have one member of that family, you know, you can have a, a family of five and four people are doing everything they can to practice complete peace and one person goes against the grain, right? It can disrupt the peace in the entire family, right? Now, it doesn't mean everybody in the family has to give up everything because this one member, uh, you know, didn't practice self-control, but there's an imbalance there, okay? And so it's important, you know, to let them know, hey, you know, it's going to take some time. Don't be discouraged if everybody doesn't jump on the, the peace train, so to speak. Uh, it's going to take some time. You continue to maintain your integrity and practice the things you have learned. And at the very least, you are improving yourself and are being a benefit to your family. And so let's look at point number seven there. It says that um, although the average family, although the average family might not have all the qualities of a um, oh yes uh, all the qualities of a he healthy moral family family members can nonetheless learn to develop the values and character that will uh, make their family healthier in fact um, just as a note there in that word core we won't go back there but um, um, associate that with core um, with what we learned on page 18 in regards to integrity. All right, integrity, the internalization. And something internal is something on the inside, okay? A core is also on the inside, okay? And so, uh, you know, these, these character traits help. They, they're at the center of your core and they make you who you are. So just, that's just kind of a, you know, a little reference there, of that, that, that core, that internalization of these positive character traits um, on page 18. Well, on page 47, in regards to point number seven that we're talking about here, um, page 47, and we'll look at the middle there. Yes, families like individuals have both negative and positive traits. However, family relationships can be improved when each member, notice here, each member begins to develop moral character traits while at the same time eliminating the negative traits. This can be accomplished if everyone, and this is why it's necessary to kind of reiterate this to point to your, your students, because everyone might not be willing to do this. It might seem odd. It might seem strange to them at first, as uh, you know, change usually is to people when they grow up in an environment where that's not taught. Respect is not really highly valued. Uh, people sometimes see respect as, you know, I'm gonna beat, beat the snot out of you and that'll teach you respect. Right, uh, but it doesn't. Right, it teaches uh, hatred and and revenge and, and retaliation and depression and things of that nature. But this can be accomplished if everyone begins to value how a moral character can improve the quality of his or her family. But notice here, 
even if you are the only one in your family who sees the value of a moral character, you can, by your example, encourage others to, <clears throat> to, to value developing an upright moral character as well, because our example is just an important contributing factor to our other family members as theirs is to ours. And lastly there, um, point number eight, it says, I can be the example to other family members when I display a positive character and when I teach by example what I have learned from the peaceful solution. And um, on page 48 there, we just read that, but we'll read it again. It says, always be the one to set the right example to avoid conflicts. Uh, model these things to help others learn from you too. Remember, it could, be, <clears throat> it could be you who gets on your sibling's nerves the next time. How would you want to be treated? Uh, there are many, positive, many ways a positive character can be used to strengthen a family. So conscientiously, or consciously, excuse me, make an effort to practice using your positive character traits every day and by your example, encourage others to do the same. Okay, and so, you know, that kind of wraps up this this chapter here, uh, chapter two, and what I have learned in regards to the effects of character within the family. And just, you know, um, you know, it, it's important for us to to reiterate to the students that because when you're dealing with a family, and that's they're kind of going to learn about society. You know, if a fam family is kind of like a small society within a house, right? But they only have the ability to control what they can do. OK, um, now that doesn't mean that they don't have an effect on their family because they do. Right. But we want them to see that they can have a positive effect on their family and that they don't have to reciprocate those negative um, those negative traits or those negative influences that were shown to them. At the bottom there of the page there, it says um, the strength of a family lies in positive character. And of course, uh, as we close out there, I want you to keep in mind what strength is. It's not necessarily muscles. Uh, it can be used to describe muscles, but it says the quality or state of being strong, capacity for exertion or endurance. And it's important that they, you know, continue to endure and in, in practicing these concepts, these principles that they're taught and never give up. It says the power to resist force. And that's important because we're getting ready to talk about some external forces um, in this next chapter of the making of a VIP. And so it's important that they understand that, that their strength, it doesn't lie within their muscles, but it lies within their mind and their ability to resist negative influences and so forth. The power of resisting attack. And it also says uh, in regards to legality, when you think about legal, think about laws, think about rules, think about morals. Logical, legal, logical, or moral force, right? So the power to resist those negative influences coming at you and have the ability to respond in a positive way can be defined as strength. And remember, you know, um, we grow stronger the more we learn these things and the more we put them into practice. Okay, so that will wrap up today's class. Um, and next class will be uh, 120, 120 at 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. We look forward to seeing everyone there, and I hope everyone has a wonderful evening, and we'll see you next class. Thank you very much.